hello, hello, brothers. Hello, sisters. How you doing? How you doing? It's dinner time, so come on in and get your place at the table. It's dinner time, and we got some good food tonight, my brothers and sisters. I see the first couple of people at the table. I see Sister Flo Harvey Morning, my little sister Renee. How you all doing? Come on in, come on in, my brothers. Come on in, my sisters. If you want to add to the conversation tonight while we're talking around right the dining table, you can feel free to do that. Call it's family time, my brothers. It's family time, my sisters. By the way, you can tell your guests, your friends to come on in and they can have a uh, seat at the table. We got plenty of soul food tonight. We got plenty of room. So get ready for a good show this evening. My brothers and sisters, this is going to be a very, very good and insightful topic. This is going to help a lot of you sisters out, a lot of men know where I'm going to be coming from. Brother, this is not going to be no beat down on you all, but I need to educate or educate the sisters. So we're about to get ready. We're going to have a few more people to come in, and we're about to dive into tonight's broadcast. So get ready for a good show this evening. Well, 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 welcome to the tonight's show, my brothers and sisters. Your brother Tony is in the house. If this is your first time looking at the broadcast, my brothers and sister, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Tony M. Toomer, and I talk about relationships. I talk about relationship basically from a biblical standpoint, but it does reflect on the average man and woman. There's no 100% man, there's not a 100% woman. We're all trying, my brother and sister, and we, especially when it comes to relationship. It's a work in progress, okay, my brother and sister? So when I talk about relationship, my brother and sisters, like I said, my name is Tony M. Tumor. For those of you that do not know me, how you doing, Sister Sherry Smith? Thank you for coming to tonight's dinner, Sherry. How you doing? How you doing? So, but what I'm about to say, my brother and sisters, are. Uh, Check this out. Uh, when it comes to a relationship, I talk from basically a biblical perspective. When I say biblical perspective, I believe strongly that God created the man, Adam, first. And secondly, he created the woman, uh, Eve. He brought the woman and the man together. And in the presence of God, the man, Adam, said in regards to Eve before God, bone my bone, flesh in my flesh, I should call a woman because she came from man. Now, if you believe in any other type of relationship, my brother and sister, you have what is called a free will. You can do whatever you choose to do. But if you're at, sitting at the, the dining table tonight, our discussion is going to be basically about men and women. But I encourage you, brothers, and I encourage you, sister, to be a part of tonight's dinner and broadcast. With that said, we're going to talk about a little something that's called she will want more even if she started off as the woman on the side. Think about that, brothers and sisters. Especially some of you brothers. Just think about that, brother. She will want more even if she started off as the woman on the side. Now, what am I referring to? Some people will say that you're talking about a side chick, Tony. That's exactly what you're talking about. Just come on out and be straight about it. Well, you could be onto something, my brothers and sisters. You could be onto something. But let me let me say this, my brother. Let me say this, my sister. When it comes to a woman, how does a woman become a woman on the side? Does the man have to be in a, a committed relationship or he does not? Now a woman could be in a a woman could be on the side even if the man is not married because this man could be one of those guys that date several women and he could have different women on the sides, okay? But for tonight's show, I'm gonna talk about a man that is already in a relationship with a woman. This is where I'm coming from. A man that's already in a relationship with a woman when it comes to a side woman. And when we say side woman, it depends on how the man look at this woman. He could look at the woman as a mistress. What is a mistress? A mistress is a woman that a man basically taking care of, like uh, that's his wife. How you doing, mother? Thank you for coming to 
to nice dinner. A mistress is a woman that a man basically take care of as if she were his wife. Just like he basically do, just like he basically does when he with his main woman, his wife, there's this other woman that the man may take care of, but she's not exactly his wife, but he put her in a position of being a mistress, meaning he look at her like she's his wife. Believe it or not, some men look at another woman like she's my wife. I got this wife right here and I got my side wife right here. How you doing, Sister Twyla Washington? Basically, before I get into what I'm going to tell you, my brother, sister, I need to tell you this before I get into tonight's broadcast because I might forget, so I'll go ahead and tell you this. Some of you may have heard it before. Some of you may have not. Let me tell you this. One time, it had to be maybe within a year, maybe within a year, maybe within a year. There was this young lady, she, well, maybe a year and a half. There was this young lady, she approached me with a proposition. And some of you saying, what type of proposition? This is the proposition that she uh, approached me with. She say, uh, Tony, I like what you are doing. I really like what you're doing, the work you're doing and everything. And I am aware that you have a wife. I'm really aware that you have a wife, but I want to propose something to you. And I say, cause I would think that the lady wanted to do consultation, right? She said, let me put this out there to you. And she told me what state she stay in. She doesn't stay in the state where I stay at. So she put this proposal out there. She said, um, I want to be your wife. I said, how are you going to do that? She said, I'm aware that you're married, but I want to be your wife too. And I said, well, you talk about polygamy. I'm not too much into polygamy. She said, no. And she she had some other kind of fancy name for it, right? But it was, you know, she she said, and I said, well, and I, you know, just for entertainment purposes, my brother and sister, I want to know exactly what she was talking about. She said, this is what, this is what I'm talking about, Tony. She said, look, I'm not asking you to leave your wife, but I want to be like as your wife. And I said, what does that mean? She said, I will move to where you're at. I will, I will get, cause I'm somewhat retired and stuff like that. I will move where you're at. And when I move where you're at, all I want you to do is the same thing you do for your wife, I want you to do for me. And I said, what does that mean? She said, everything you do for her, I want you to do it for me. But I have my house over there close to you, and you could stay, you and her could do your thing, but it's an understanding between you and I that I would be like your wife too. She said, you know, I want you to consider that. And I said, well, I don't think that'll work out for me, but thank you for you know, being open and let me know that. But anyway, let me go ahead with the rest of this story. She will want more even if she started off as the woman on the side. The more women that a man deals with, my brother and sister, there will be more problems. You understand that? The more women a man deals with, He's going to have more problems. Why would a man have more problems? Brother time, you multiply several women. This is what you got to understand. And I'm I'm at the age where I could tell some of you brothers something. You know what I mean? I'm at the age where I could tell you all. So let me tell you, dear brother, the more women you deal with, it's going to be taxing on your mind because you're an analytical brother. It's going to be taxing on your mind. Why do I say it's going to be taxing on your mind? Because when the more women you deal with, you're dealing with different personalities. And you remember, I always say women operate on a frequency called emotions. So you're going to be dealing with the, comp the complex natures of different women. They don't think the same. They, they, they think similar things, but yet they, aren't, they have their own personality. So you going to be dealing with a woman they they get their emotions like go up and down sometimes how you know sister Deborah so you you're gonna deal with the emotions 
and it's going to be taxing on your mind, brother, the more women you deal with. Not only is it going to be taxing on your mind, brother, it's going to be taxing on your time. What do I mean by tax on your time? If these women really get into you, brother, they're going to want you to spend quality time with them. Even if you even if you be straight up with the woman at the beginning, bro, when you be straight up with the woman at the beginning, she's still going to want more time. But I'm going to get into that a little later on in this broadcast, okay? So we, you talk about it's going to be taxing on your mind. It's going to be taxing. Um, whew, your time is going to be taxing on your body. Because if the woman really get into you, brother, she's going to want physical intimacy. She's going to want physical intimacy. So you're going to be, are you going to be able to service a whole bunch of women? What if, what if, let's say, brother, you got five women. Let's say you got five women on the side. You buy good, you good if you, if you uh, have an extra woman on the side. When I say good, I ain't mean in a positive way. Say, for example, your main woman wants you physically and she wears you out. And then you go by the side woman house and she she wants some physical intimacy and she wears you out. Or vice versa, you go to the side woman house and she wears you out physically. Then you get home and your main woman, she want to be physical. So, brothers... As you get old and stuff like that, you're not you're not young now. Remember that some of you brothers aren't young. Most of y'all that listen to me, you're not that young. But when you was young, you probably had some stamina, right? But as you get older, you're not. I just got to be uh, realistic with your brother. You're not gonna have. You're not gonna be able to serve women that much. Um, even if you had take Viagra and Cialis and all that kind of stuff, you see, you got to be stimulated with your mind. So not only are you gonna be taxed on your mind your uh, time, your body, and especially your finance. The more women you deal with, brother, some of them are going to hit you up for some money, some kind of way. If it's not money directly, they're going to need for you to do something. They're going to want to do something. So you're going to be stressed out when you deal with more women. And let me tell you this, brother, if you or a, a follower of the Lord. Listen to me, Kev. This is the most important thing, my brothers. If you are a follower of the Lord and you're dealing with a whole bunch of women, the more women you deal with, different women serve different types of gods. Every woman that you deal with, brother, they might not serve the same type of God that you serve. Say, for example, brother, you serve Jesus, right? Say, for you serve Jesus and you're dealing with all these women, and some of them believe in different things. You know what you're going to end up doing? You're going to compromise your position. How you doing, Sister K? You're going to compromise your position of what you believe. Why do I say that? You're not no exception to the rule, brother. Let me give you an example. Like King Solomon. You are familiar with King Solomon. How you doing, Sister Deborah? Now, you are familiar with King Solomon. King Solomon, you all remember this. He had a thousand women. 700 of them was his wife. The other was like concubines. Solomon had a thousand women. You brothers right now, can't just imagine, you, your name ain't Solomon, but Solomon had a thousand women. Can you imagine that being taxing on his mind, his uh, time, his uh, body, and his uh, resources? Well, the resource because he was very wealthy, but the other stuff, right? But you see, the thing what Solomon dealt with, he lost his his uh, priority when it came to the Lord, because he was dealing with different women that believed different things, and he Solomon believed in that thing happened why it happened life. So he was trying to please all these women. So while he was trying to please all these women, they were taking his heart away from the Lord. So that's a that's a major thing, brother, that could happen if you deal with several women. You're going to try to please them. That's what you're going to try to do. And if you're strong in the Lord, they're going. To, if you deal with more women, your heart is going to slip away from the Lord, okay? Now, what do men need to know when it comes to most women? This is what most men you need to know when it comes to most women. Not all women, but most women. When a woman decides, or shall I say differently, when she 
decide to choose you. Women don't women don't choose you, brother, just randomly, okay? Some of you brothers think because, that you have style. Some of you brothers, you think that you have swag. Some of you brothers think that you got some smooth words and etc. But how shall I say this? That's what you think. But women, when you approach women, you got to understand it, brother. You do it on a mental level. Women do it on a feeling level. What you think sells women, they look at things from an opposite perspective because they're emotional. You know, I always say this, that a man knows within a short period of time, he knows, he knows within a short period of time what type of woman he wants to be with long term. However, brother, women feel in a short period of time who they want to deal with. You see what I'm saying? Men think women feel. Women feel who they want to deal with. So it has nothing to do with your swag. It has nothing to do with your, your style, your, your smooth walk and all that kind of stuff. It has nothing to do with women operate on the emotional, which leads to tonight's topic. Tonight's topic, for those of you that just coming in to dinner, tonight's topic is she will want more even if she start off as the side woman. What stresses women out the most? There's different thing that stresses women out. But one thing that's at the top will stress me women out. What stress a lot of women out is where they stand there or their position when it comes to a man. You see, this is what stress some of you sisters out. You see, sister, when you when you are communicating with a man, you communicate him, you try you think that you can relate to that man on an emotional level. When you deal with a man, sister, you can't feel your position when it comes to a man. You have to know your position and how you know it. You got to somewhat society your emotions so you can get into the head of that man. And how do you get into the head of that man? You can't read his mind, so you have to compare him to talk to you. And when he talked to you, you got to watch his communication, how he, he deal with you, because he's going to deal with you verbally. He got verbal communication and he got physical communication. So you have to combine the verbal and the physical together so you can get some type of way how this man think about you. Because the man, he is going to think about you, sister, okay? He's going to think about you. And men, men that been out there in the, the streets and stuff like that, a lot of the, the, the gamics and tricks that me and you on the street, they normally use those game playing for woman after woman after woman, unless they they are running to an advanced woman. So they got to come out their bed with a deeper game, okay? So in 1 Corinthians 11, 9, brother, you need to understand this, that according to Paul in 1 Corinthians 11, 9, and the man was not made for the woman, but the woman was made for the man. So sister and brother, brother, you understand that you were not made for a woman. Sister, you got to understand that you were made for the man. That's the position. You have to be equipped with that particular knowledge, brother and sister. So brother, if you were not made, created for the woman, you know that the woman was created for you. So you got to understand, you know how you got, what you need from that woman or, or basically what you want from the woman called out of, and I have always said this before, and we talk, we narrowed it down to the United States of America, 10 being the highest, probably 8.5 men don't want women for the long term. They want to use women. Most men, 8.5, want to use women with the other one. Those are sincere brothers that really trying to get to the woman. But you see that small ratio my brothers and sisters sister that small ratio a lot of women you all ignore that other percentage that left out if eight point if eight point five um men really want to use you 
that lead what, 1.5 or something like that, that are legit. But a lot of times, a lot of sisters, you don't want to deal with those small, few good men because a lot of them does not have an edge, okay? Now, putting him back in the framework of a man with a woman and he has a side woman. But, but before that, before that, listen to this. You men that decide that you want to bring another woman into the fold, just know the term of the original agreement. Some of you brothers that you know you got a woman at home and you want to bring another woman into the fold. Listen to this. The original agreement that you have with a woman that catch feeling for you come more than likely if she if she start if you invest your time around her and you're doing things with her, most women are going to change the original term of the contract. The verbal contract, some of you brothers, some of you brothers that are pride yourself on being straight up. You could be straight up with most women. You could be straight up with most women. But I'm telling you, bro, you don't understand how women operate. That's why a lot of you all get in a lot of trouble. Because you, you approach a woman from an analytical standpoint. They're emotional. A woman can agree with you. Let me tell you something, brother. A woman can agree with you at the first part of the contract. You could tell this woman, look, I'm in a relationship. You could even say, I'm married. Or I'm in a relationship with another woman. And if this woman agrees face value at the beginning, okay, this woman might say, okay, at least you was honest with me. You didn't hide from me. You didn't lie. Code. A lot of men, they go around lying, which a lot of them do. But you are a straight up brother. So since you're straight up, let's just be friends. Let's just be friends. So, a lot of you, brother, you are skilled, so you'll go the friendship route. You'll jump into the French, the friend zone with these women, but you have ulterior motives for that woman. You don't want to stay in no, uh, no uh, friend zone with that woman, so you're going to work yourself out of it. How are you working yourself out of it? You're going to start contacting her. You're going to be calling her. You're going to be texting her. You're going to be taking her out. You're going to be doing nice things for her because you're going to try to stay in the forefront of her mind. You're going to find yourself sending good morning texts consistently. You're going to find yourself calling her consistently. How you doing, Sister Smith? You're going to find yourself doing all these things, brother, to the woman. So, brother, the more you reach out to this woman, you know what she's going to do? You're, going, you're working on her emotions. And you might, if you skill, you're gonna do some things what other brothers gonna do. What other men, they mostly uh approach a woman from a thirsty standpoint. No, but you cool, right, brother? You ain't no you're not gonna put your card on the table yet. You like at the poker table with the poker face. So you really don't want her to see what you're doing. But let me tell you something, brother. Women know what a lot of time what we be up to. They know. A lot of them, they play the game with you. A lot of women, they play dumb, but they're not dumb. They just want to see how far you're going to go with the act. The act. That's what a lot of them do. So, I'm telling you. How you doing, Sister Cynthia? I'm telling you. Brothers, when you... I, I will, Sister Smith. I, um, brothers, most of the time, when you deal with a woman on the outside, when you're doing all these great things for her, especially when you're taking her out, and this is another thing, brother, when you going out in public with the side woman, because you know some side women, they they might act, they may act like they understand from the beginning, so they're gonna kind of like ain't gonna make no no big thing out of it, but eventually they're gonna want to go out in public with you. Did you know that? Eventually, they're going to go out in public with you. Not only are they going to go out in public with you, they're going to want to know about your family. They want to be introduced to your family, especially though they catch feeling. They're going to want to be introduced to your friends. They're going to want to be introduced to different parts of your life. 
And you know what? The woman that you have a relationship with, your wife or your girlfriend, the side woman, she's going to want to know especially a lot about that woman that you stand with. That's what she, she wants to have knowledge of that woman because she's going to be thinking, what is it with this woman that he's dealing with me? That's what they're going to be thinking. What is it? And then some of you brothers, you put on this pity party stuff to make the woman, because you're working on her emotion. You you tell her stuff like, well, me and my old woman, we having problems and we, we got children and I'm there for the children. You know, she just there for a little while until she finds somewhere to stay. You brother, y'all know y'all be lying and stuff like that. And here's gonna one of the big the bigger one of the biggest lies. We don't sleep together. Now sometimes that could be true. Now sometimes that could be true. But most of the time, when a man sleeping with a woman, and if she and if she is not getting no action on the side, and she and she's a healthy woman, she's not going to want to play with the, the roles a lot. You all know what the roles is, right? I talked about that. She's not going to want to play with the role. Now, some of you women that play with the role, you, you're going to get addicted now. And playing with those other toys, you're going to get addicted. So you get addicted playing with all those roles, the vibrators and all that kind of stuff. No man will be able to satisfy you get addicted to those toys. But let's say the woman don't have no toy. She's not going to, she's not going to want to, um, entertain herself with her hands and stuff. She wanna want she gonna want the real deal, even though your name ain't Holyfield. She's gonna want the real deal, brother. So even if this woman can't stand you and she got a high nature, she might result to just being roommates with you. The woman that you're living with. And then you she might come to your room for services. And you might go to her room for services, but you selling the side woman like you and that woman ain't doing nothing. The side woman see you and that main woman, they see you out in public together. The side woman see you on Facebook together. They see you at different things together. They see all that stuff. Even though you trying to create time for the side woman, right? Because you're trying to bring her into the fold. But you got to understand, this, uh, sister and brother, sister, men are analytical. You got to get this through your heart, sisters. Men are analytical, and sister, you are, and brothers, they, they strictly operate on emotion, their feeling. Now, what do I mean by that, my brother, sister? That is exactly what I mean. Sister Smith said, I have never... In my 53 years, my daughter had the nerve to tell me that what women use now, not me, I have a husband for 17 years. That right, Sister Smith, so you know what I mean by that rose thing, right? You know, some of some of my, um, some people that I communicate with, they told me about this little rose thing. I, my, my wife don't use it unless she, unless she got a head somewhere. She don't use it. But anyway, that's another story, another topic. But anyway... First, there are a few women that attempt to separate their emotion from a man. There are a few women that try to operate like a man. There's a few. Because there's a few women that say, I got all my stuff together. So I don't need no man but for one thing. But you see, even these type of women that say they don't want nothing but one thing from a man called taking care of myself financially and I'm a boss and all that kind of stuff. After they, let me tell you something. Even if this boss lady is a side piece, she gonna get emotional eventually. She's gonna get emotional. Sister K said, I have a husband, but he, but he and I aren't do have sex. Okay, all right. Um, she got threw me out of my game. But let me get back on it. Brothers, the sisters, the, the women that the boss ladies, and they act like they don't need nothing. If they keep allowing you to spend time with them, if they continue to, to let you take them out and they or they take you out however it's going to be, and then this is what happens to 
This is when a lot of women change the terms of the contract. At the beginning of the contract, brother, you could be like this. Look, I got a wife or I got a woman. And the side woman, she will say, well, I understand. We could just be friends. But, brother, you know you want to be more than friends. And a lot of times, if you, the side woman, she got emotions, so she might start feeling a certain type of way. And so the more time you spend with her, you, you get into her. You working on her emotion. You understand? The more time you spend with this woman. That's the first thing. Then, when you move this woman up in priority, you give her time, and now you're moving up priority. Some of you, brother, you so slick, well, you you got the side woman thinking she the main woman. Because the side woman saying, how can his wife or his girlfriend be the wife or the girlfriend when he be with me most of the time? So there are some brothers that do like that. They actually spend more time with the side woman than the woman at home or the little girlfriend. They do. So the side woman, you done gassed her head up, right, brother? But let me tell you, let me tell you something. If you operate from the side woman position, let me tell you this. Most men, listen to me, some of you single sisters. Not only some of you single sisters. What? Let me tell you something. The side woman don't have to be single. Let me just put that out there. The side woman does not have to be single. There are some married women that side women. Do you are you all not aware of that there are some married women that are side women? They are side women with a single man that got a that got a girlfriend, or they could be the side woman with a married man. It could go both ways. So don't think some of some of you sisters out there single don't think that being a side woman is delegated to just single women. There are some married women that side women. And there are some, let me tell you about some married women. A man that dealing with a, a, a married woman, married women can get feelings too. Did you, uh, you see, she can have a whole husband. She can have a whole husband over there on the north side of town and then you, brother, you start uh, doing the same thing as you will with a side woman that's single. You doing all this stuff with a married woman, and she can start getting feeling for you. My sister K said, say that because I ended up being a side to my first husband. Yeah, you, you sister know that your brother Tony, he cooking the night at the dinner table. You all know that I got some good soul food for you all tonight. But the, side, the, the married woman, if the man start put her high on the priority list, what do I mean by that? Let's say the married woman is going through some things with her husband, right? She going through some complication with her husband. So a lot of married women, they be they appear to be more strategic. You understand? They try to be more strategic because they don't want to mess up what's going on in the home. Even though her and her husband could have a, a, a hell-raising thing over at the house. Her husband might not be talking to her good. He might not spend time with her. He had her low on the token pole. He don't want nothing really to do with her. She, they roommates. And every now and then, they may have sex. But then it could come to a point where they ain't having sex at all. So this woman that's married, she, she needs a man. She will prefer her husband. But since it's not her husband, this side guy that got a wife or another woman, this side guy, he elevates her mind. He, he building her he building up her mind. He know what to say to her. So he's building her up. He's encouraging her. He patting on the back, telling her how great she is, how beautiful she is. He just laying it on. He love bombing this woman. He love bombing this married woman. So now he is approaching that woman from an emotional position. He know what he's doing. He's skilled. So she's the lonely housewife. So I'm going to rescue her. My name is Rico. 
I'm going to rescue Betty Boo. So I'm, I know Betty Boo married. So, and I know me and Betty Boo can't do that much because she's married and I'm married or I got a girlfriend. Or yet, Betty Boo might not be married. Betty Boo could have a boyfriend. You know, that's right, little sister. Betty Boo could have a boyfriend. She ain't got to be married, but she call herself in a relationship. But Betty Boo know that me, Rico, Suave, I'm telling her some stuff that homeboy is not telling her. She thirsty for it. She real thirsty. Every time I'm me, Rico, talking mm -hmm. to her, she thirsty. I tell her how she, I'm telling her how good she look, how she smell, not, not how the dress fit her, but how she make that dress look good. You know what? Now, I, I want, you see, I'm Rico. I want to say that dress look good on you. Me being Rico, I got to modify and say, you make that dress look good. You see, you get into, he working on her emotions, right? So she feeling good. This man really, uh, this man really paying attention to me. Then me being Rico, I'm going to say, hey, we need to hang out sometime. She might resist it at first. We might, we, then she's still having that, that hellish relationship in her home with her husband. So Rico catch at me being Rico, I catch at the right time, right? So she said, oh, what the heck? Let's hang out. So we go out to we go out to lunch. We go out to dinner and stuff like that. We walk around the park. I'm at the gym. Hey, come on to the gym. Do you work out? You don't work out? Come on over to the gym. So we working out and everything. But I'm so cool. I'm so cool. And I got that poker face on. And I don't say nothing about sex. I don't say nothing about it. Then she then she wondering, this man, it's something about this man, Rico. He he doing all the right thing, what my husband and my boyfriend ain't doing, but yet he ain't even talking about sex. Most of the men, they always talk about sex. Or they hint around to it. But it's something with this guy. He don't even bring it up. We even go out. He would kiss me on my cheek and say, have a good day. He don't even try to get me to no hotel room. He ain't trying none of that. You know what Rico doing? Rico is getting you prepared just like you're a turkey for Thanksgiving. You all know what these uh, farmers do. They feed the turkeys, right? I'm not calling women turkey, but just listen to the illustration. The turkey, they be eating all that food coming up to Thanksgiving. Gobble, 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 gobble. And they don't they don't turkey talking to each other. Yeah. This farmer, he sure feeding us some good food. Now, for the last few months, he really feeding us. Ain't that right, Joe? Yeah, Bob. He sure feeding us real good. What they don't know, Thanksgiving is about to come. And so it's going to be a day they fatten all up. And then they go through this lip. They, then they walk down this line. They don't know that their head about to get chopped off. That's what some of these brothers be doing to some of these side women. They be getting you ready like you a turkey getting ready for Thanksgiving and you don't see it coming. Sometimes you don't see it coming. So they swing you up. They take you out in public. Then eventually they will, then eventually they're going to try to, they're going to flip it on you and see what you suggest that y'all be together. Isolated. She, she going to cause she, no, you, she feeling you now because she ain't getting it at home from her home. Or your, her boyfriend. So she might suggest y'all get together. Can I come over to your place? Or can we meet somewhere privately? You know what that means, brother. So when you meet the side woman privately, she go to tell Victoria her secret. She go to, yeah, y'all know about Victoria. She go to Victoria and tell Victoria some secrets. And Victoria give her some stuff to an attire to put on. So she go home. She go to the she go to get her hair done. She go buy some new perfume. She go buy a new outfit. And then she put on this and then she get some undergarments. Six sex, sexy looking armor garment. Cause she know 
If he don't say nothing stupid, he been doing well so far in class. He been getting A's all the way through the class. Now I'm about to give him a reward. Mm -hmm. Long as he doesn't say nothing stupid or do, do nothing stupid. I feel safe around Rico. That's what the woman going to say. I feel safe around Rico. So they get in an isolated place. And do I need to say any more about that? Then Rico touch her. And Rico put it on her like she never had before. Her husband was basically missionary. missionary. Rico having this woman flip all kinds of way, hanging hang from the chandelier and all that kind of stuff. So Rico turn, turned her out. She told her girlfriend what was going on. Her girlfriend already knew what's going on in the house call. Of course, she would have been telling her girlfriend. So she had to get on the phone and tell her girlfriend about Rico, how great he is. And child, he know how to put it down. My husband don't go, my husband don't go past two minutes. Rico put it down. Rico went by between 30 minutes and an hour. Rico care about me. What Rico was doing to her, he was love bombing her. He was getting her hooked. But she was supposed to understand that Rico had a wife or a girlfriend. She was not number one. She was definitely not number one. That's the beginning of, it started all with the verbal communication. Everything started in the mind first, then it trickled to the body, which is the mouth. So the man approached her from an analytical standpoint, because he understand, he's skilled. I got to approach her from the emotion. Once I approach her from the emotions, I get to her will, and she will accept what I'm doing or reject. All I have to do is keep lower bombing her, lower bombing. Then I get to what I really want, I want to get to her mind. Because if I get to her mind, her body will follow. So the woman, the side woman, she she started believing this man, he spent his time, he treated me good, he talking to me good. I want more. I want more. Yes, I'm married, but I want Rico. I'm ready to leave my... If Rico could take take me, I know I got that big three hundred some thousand dollar house. I would move to a small apartment if Rico just treat me right. I would leave him with everything. I know Tina. She told I just leave me, just give me my name. You can keep the stuff, but I don't know about. I am not, I'm not Tina, but I'm going to get some of that stuff because I put some years in. I'm going to get some of that stuff, but I'm willing to go with Rico. Because no man ain't never treat me like that before. Then what uh, Betty Boo do, she called to Rico and said, Rico, I'm in love with you. I'm in love with you. And Rico get quiet. Rico get quiet where you can hear crickets in the daytime. At When the sun is up. You know, you normally hear crickets when it get dark. Now nah, Rico go cricket on you. Then you and Rico end up in the bed. That's where she's going to set you up. She's going to start talking to you. but She start giving you little hints, right? And you're going to find Rico, whereas she's going to reach out to you more too. Because you her, you her, you her drug now. She's not on cocaine or nothing. She is officially uh, hooked on you. And it's not phonics, but she hooked on you, Rico. And she don't want to let you go. And then she catch you in the bed when she started doing some pillow talk. While you laying there after a hot session of hot steaming sex, she going to bend on her elbow and look down in your face and say, I want more. Whether she a wife or she had a relationship with someone or she might not. Let me tell you something, Rico. That woman herself, she might have a boyfriend, she might have a husband, or she could be talking to several minions. That's another thing. She could be talking to several men, but she promoted you to number one, Rico, even though you got a wife or a girlfriend. She has promoted you to number one. 
And then after a hot sex scene, she looked down into your eyes and say, is this all you want? I want more. And then you look at her, Rico, you say, you, you, in your mind, you might not say it verbally, you, she, she married. She tripping. She got a boyfriend. She tripping. I know she's talking to other men. She's tripping. This is just, I, I can't do this. Or Rico might change, you know, Rico middle name is uh, Ray. You, you didn't know Rico middle name was Ray. So he Ray Charles and said, hey, you knew the rules. You knew the rules. I got a wife. B, I got a wife. I ain't leaving B. I got a girlfriend, Sally. I'm not leaving Sally. I'm not leaving B, my wife, or I'm not leaving Sally. And then she feel crushed. Then she gonna then she gonna play the victim game on you, Rico. She gonna say you used her. That's what she gonna say. You used her. You didn't use her. She agreed verbally that she knew the deal. But she gonna change the terms of the contract. It ain't men and women that, brother, if you deal with a woman, they don't think analytical. They operate on the emotions. And if you treat her good, you remember that song? You all remember that song by the SOS band? You remember that song, Just Be Good To Me? You all remember that song? If you all remember that song, somebody give me a number one. That song, if y'all listen to it after this show, listen to that song, listen to the lyric, Just Be Good To Me. What the lady was saying in that song from the SOS band, she was she was aware that the man had something else going on. And her main thing is just be good to me. That's how a lot of women think. Just be good to me. I know, at least he told me the truth, but women, they, they're going to change the term of the contract, brother. I'm telling you this, brother, if you deal with an outside woman, and you treat her very good. And if you have no intentions of leaving your wife, thank you all for putting that number one up. If you not don't have no intentions of leaving your wife or your girlfriend, she start thinking that she could take you from that situation. If she can't take you from that situation, then you might get to the point where you say, hey, I need to chill. I can't do this because this going too far. This, you know, I didn't expect for her to get all emotional. Brother, you got to expect that because it will get emotional. Let me tell you something, brother. You treat her good and stuff, but the main thing will get these women hooked is when they allow you to get real close to them sexually. You treat you, you are you approaching their heart, you're approaching their mind, now they're giving you their bodies. And let me tell you this, brother. They may start off with protection. What do I mean by protection? Like a lot of women and brothers, they tell their children, don't get pregnant and all that kind of stuff. Use a condom. Let me tell you something, brother. When you start dealing with a side woman, there are not many of them that want you to use no condoms. They want it raw. They don't even bring up no condoms. I'm just telling you like it is. They're not going to do it. The, the worst thing you could do, brother, is mislead the woman. Don't lie to the woman and say, we got all these problems. And while you're doing it, working on her emotions. So if you're telling the woman, me and my wife and me and my girlfriend got problems, you're selling her a sob story. So that's working on her emotions. Then you're selling her a sob story. And then you're selling her a sob story. And you're being good to her and everything. And then she thinking, what is it that... I could treat him better than this woman. His wife or his girlfriend, I could treat him. She treat him bad. My wife don't cook for me. That's what Rico saying. She don't cook for me. So this woman, she started cooking for you. My wife don't wash my clothes. She started washing your clothes. She started doing everything that your wife or your, your girlfriend are not doing. Because she is in, she have grown in love with you. Now, worst thing you could do, brother, if you're going to have a side woman, you lie to her to get her. 
You just point blank lie to her. That's when you're going to have some problem. That's when the fatal attraction start kicking in that when you start lying to them. Especially if you lie to them and sleep with them and then you, you think you're going to walk away. Just like that lady on uh, Fatal Traction, she told Michael Douglas, Glenn Close said, I will not be ignored. Let me tell you something, brother. That Fatal Traction stuff, that's some real stuff. Don't, don't think it just on the movie, brother. That's some real stuff. The Fatal Traction stuff. That's some real stuff if you run into the wrong woman. And let me tell you what happened when you run into the wrong woman, brother, that Yeah, yeah, that, that's right, Sister K. Let me tell you something, brother, when you run into the real, real wrong woman. The real, real wrong woman, she will mess you up. If if it's something that she know you love and stuff, Kyle, a lot of you, brother, that got these side women, you tell the side woman too much about your business. So you tell, you give her ammunition. You give and not what I'm telling you, I'm not endorsing this behavior. So don't get don't get it twisted. I'm not I'm just telling you how humans operate. Some of you brother, you tell this other woman so much stuff. And especially some of you brother, you tell the side woman too much about your wife. You tell the side woman too much about your girlfriend. So you giving them all this ammunition to use against you down the road when you don't do right, then she wanna threaten you. If you got a high position, she's she going to make it be known. Don't be in politics or nothing like that. Don't be don't be no high, no high profile. Some of you guys that preach, uh-uh, don't do it because she wants to bust you. She might just come up where you preaching at. She might just come up there and, and where you, while you preaching on Sunday, when, when your wife, Rico, when your wife, Rico, while you preaching, your wife and your little children, they're on the front pew, right? This woman, you see her, she come in late. She look like she going to a funeral. She have on all black and she have a veil. And everybody looking at her, she walking by and everybody doing like this. You all know a moving object gets uh, attention, right? Everybody looking at this lady, she walking by like this. Then she sat there and you wondering why she there, Rico, why are you preaching? Then when it comes to the time to confess, She's gonna be the last one to go up there. I got something to say. I gotta get I got to get this off my chest. And then you up there sweating. You don't know what she's gonna say. And then she look at your wife. And she look at the children. She look at the whole congregation. If y'all got a choir behind you, Rico, she looking at the, the she said, Hello, choir. Hello, preacher. Hello, elders. Hello, ladies. Hello, congregation. I'm just here because I want to share something that was heavy on my heart. And then you sweat, Enrico. Then you get your handkerchief done like this. It's something that I must say. Check out. She said, it's something that I must say. I don't mean to hurt you, Miss Charles. Rico Ray Charles. I don't want to hurt you, Miss uh, Charles. But, and I don't want to hurt the church. I don't want. I don't want to split up the congregation. I don't want to do this. But I was moved by the spirit. She was moved by evil spirit. She wasn't moved by God. She moved by evil spirit because she pissed off. She want to break you down. She want to stop the congregation for giving you money. She want to stop the congregation for doing anything. Then she tell. Then she said. Miss Charles, Ray and I, we had an inappropriate relationship. And then the other country guys, they be doing, looking at each other like this. And then Miss Charles looking, she's saying, what do you, what do you mean? This, Miss Charles, I know this is going to hurt, but your husband, Ray, and I, we've been having a fair. How many children do you have? Seven. We've been having a we've been having a relationship for seven years. The congregation get quiet.
you could you could hear a flea urinate on a piece of cotton. That's just how quiet it is. A flea urinate on a piece of cotton. That's how quiet it get. Then she dropped the mic. You you know like when somebody get finished talking. You know like when somebody get finished talking. Here go the mic. Then she put the veil back on her face and she just walked slowly down. And chaos, and chaos. Your wife, she gets, she started crying. And the sisters in there, they run to rescue her. It, then one of the deacons and some said, church out. Then they had that meeting to vote your butt out, Rico. You was at the top, right? You running for office, right, Rico? You running for office. You and your wife looking good. You and the children looking good. You, the polls coming out where they say you can, you probably gonna win. She wait to the last, the last few. She wait to two weeks before the election, and then you get you get something. Some somebody starts saying somebody. This woman saying you. You got some things going on. Then you find out that you got a child. That child that she hid. You know when she said she was going to Jamaica? You remember, you remember when she said she was going to Jamaica? You remember those months that you didn't see her and she and she she disappeared on you? So she started talking to you a year later. She put she got her mama keeping your child. She ain't mention it. But year going by, and now she spring a child on you. You saying it ain't your child, Rico. Then you go to the Morris show. But before it goes off, I think it's about to go off. You better go to the Morris show right now to get that, that free DNA test. And you find out that he yours. Re RJ, Rico Jr. is yours. Now your wife in the bounce. And she want to go to talk to an expensive lawyer. And there it is. It costs, brother. What am I saying? When you get in it to most women. How it started off. And then they start catching feelings. And some of them don't care what happened to them. They don't care. At that time, they, most, they don't care. They might even come to your house. They may even come to your house, brother. One thing that they want, they want your, they, and let me tell you what some of you brothers do. What's wrong? Let me tell you what some of you brothers do. Some of you brothers that got side women. Let me tell you what y'all do wrong. Some of you brothers, and I'm not endorsing this. I'm just telling you what I know about. And some of you saying, how you know about it? You must have did it. Nope. I do consultation. Let me tell you. One thing a lot of you brothers do. You, some of you brothers, y'all take genital pictures and send them to these women. Y'all take pictures of your genitalia and you send it to these women that you think you could trust. You send, emo, you send a whole bunch of emojis and stuff and tell the woman just put all your heart in the in the our text. All this stuff in emotion. Don't you know, brother, that woman, she's going to show her girlfriend pictures of your genitalia. And her girlfriend said, ooh, wee. He packing like that? Are you sent, are you, you texting her? Sweet, sweet stuff, real sweet stuff. Don't tell her stuff like you. You remember last. You remember last week when we threw down in your bed and you put it and you texting it. You remember last night when we last week when we were throwing down in your bed and all that kind of stuff. You got she got documentation. You go to a hotel. She don't see what you're doing. You go to a hotel. And you get things on your original credit card, and then it come to court. Then they find out that you got a transaction that's going to a hotel because you use your own credit card. You didn't use cash.
or you didn't use another type of credit card. You didn't use that prepaid card. You didn't do it, did you, bro? You didn't use that prepaid card. You were sloppy. And she got you. And then the bad thing, you didn't, she didn't, you didn't tell her everything about your wife or your girlfriend. Now she wants to really mess you up. She wants to go to your wife or she wants to go to your girlfriend and she going to tell it all. And then your wife or girlfriend going to want to know, how does she know so much about me unless you told her? Now, what I'm doing, I'm not endorsing this type of behavior. I'm just telling you how it go. Some of you brothers, when you do this, you talk too much. Just because this side woman tell you everything that's going on in her life, why are you telling her everything that's going on in your life? You already know that it's not going to be no forever and a day with that woman. So why are you telling her everything? You was wrong anyway. She was wrong anyway because she knew that. And let me tell you some of you sisters. Let me tell you some of you sisters. Some of you sisters, listen up. If that man, listen to me carefully, listen to me carefully, listen to me carefully. If that man leave his wife, his girlfriend, primarily for you. Now listen to what I'm saying. If he leave his wife or girl, girlfriend primarily only for you, only for you, the same thing going to happen to you. If he, if him and his wife or girlfriend break up outside of you, I don't know what's going to happen. But if he leave his wife, if he say, I'm going to leave my wife, my girlfriend just for you. And you think that you got an edge on the girlfriend or the or the wife, right? And you had knowledge what he was doing. You had knowledge that he coming to you. He's going to come to you and you're going to get married. That's why I'm telling you. How you doing, Sister Ron? Let me tell you something, some of you sister. I'm telling you this. If this man leave his wife primarily for you and he's not leaving his wife for other reasons outside of you, He's not leaving his girlfriend outside of you, possibility. But if you playing the role of, and you you playing it, and let me tell you, sister, something. You never take a man from a woman. You never take a, and let some of you sister that married or got a man that go to another woman. She didn't take him. He decided to go. No woman take a, a man from you and vice versa. Brother, if your wife or girlfriend bounce on you, no man took her from you. She made a decision to leave. You understand? She made a decision. Let me tell you how it is with some side women. Just this is how it is. This is how it is. Let's say you're coaching the Los Angeles Lakers. Brother, you the coach of the Los Angeles Lakers. You got LeBron James on your team. And when you got LeBron James on your team, you got another player that's sitting on the bench. That person that's sitting on the bench used to be number one in high school. That person that's sitting on the bench used to be number one in college. Now that person is on the bench and don't want, don't like being number one. Yes. That player could see LeBron James to start, but in that man's heart, I want to take LeBron James. I want to eat LeBron James lunch. I I play just as good as LeBron James. I'm on the bench, but I play better. That's how a lot of players be thinking. Football, basketball, whatever. But we just using the Los Angeles Lakers. When that per when LeBron James have to come out the game, that person that's sitting on the bench gonna try to look better than LeBron James on the court. That's what a side woman would do for you, brothers. They're going to come off the bench when your wife is sitting down or whatever, resting, and they're going to show you that they're supposed to be on the court. Let the brawn Jane go. Cut the brawn loose. I can play just a good LeBron James. But no, what you do, brother, your wife is LeBron James, right? 
and you pull, you said, come, time to get back in the game. And you tell your side woman, go back, go back and sit on the bench. As a matter of fact, go sit at the end of the bench until LeBron get hurt. Well, LeBron James can't perform. And while LeBron James is hurt and can't perform, you got to take LeBron place until LeBron come back. You better believe LeBron come back. Am I going to trade LeBron? Oh, no, I'm not. Because I know I can go to the championship with LeBron. I can. LeBron got a proven track record. I don't know about you. You got potential, but I can't I can't guarantee LeBron got he didn't took he didn't went to the promo land a whole bunch of times. That's how some men see it, some of you sisters. If a man got a pretty decent wife or a decent girlfriend, and they really ain't causing him no problem. Ain't really causing no problem. You might you might just be sitting on the bench. Or you get traded. Or you get cut. And you go and you out the league. And then you have to go to Europe or somewhere and play where nobody don't know you no more. Or better yet, you got to understand this, some of you brothers and sisters. The woman, the wife, or the girlfriend is the queen. I always remember this. The wife or the girlfriend is the queen. If you want to talk royalty, side women were called concubines. What is a concubine? A concubine is a woman that will never be the queen. The king would take care of the concubine. He would do a lot of stuff about, with the concubine. People know about the concubine. Some people might know about the concubine, but what does the concubine see? The concubine see the king strolling to the ball with the queen on his arm. You're not on his arm. The people see the queen dancing in the middle with the man at the ball. He's not dancing with you at the ball. The people see the queen walking side by side with the queen. He's not walking with you, but you know, He's not doing that. He, people see the queen sitting on the throne. You're not sitting on the throne. You look at the throne. And the only time you get on the throne is when nobody ain't around, when you sneak in. You sneak in and sit on the throne and say, ooh, this is how I feel to be a queen. Nobody's seeing you but the joker. The jester, you know the jester that that make fun, that try to get the queen, the king to laugh. The jester and that they're laughing at you. That's all. That's your audience right there. And let, let me tell you something before I go. Some of you, it, I hope I'm not talking to some of you sisters. Some of you sisters, if you decide to get into a relationship with a man and you know the deal. And he's straight up with you. This is kid. This is kid. He's not lying to you. He's straight up with you. He let you know, just like Ray Charles let that lady know. You got. You got to know. The, you got to know the rules. What are the rules? Don't mess with my wife. Don't mess with my girlfriend. They ain't got nothing to do with between you and I. Some of you, some women, they want to play the victim. Listen, some women want to play the victim. Why do you want to play the victim when you consciously got into the relationship with the guy? He did not hold no gun up against your head. He did not put no knife to your back. There are a whole bunch of women out there want to play the victim. You are not no victim. You decided to deal with that man. Now you get butt hurt when he trades you or cut you off the team, you made a decision. You signed a temporary contract. You are, you're, you're not LeBron James, the female version. Lebr the LeBron James signed a long-term contract. You did not sign a long-term contract. You signed a temporary contract. And you think that you get the same thing that the female LeBrons get. 
Samantha. You think you get what Samantha gets, right? Uh-uh. We had good dinner tonight, didn't we? We had some real good dinner, my brother and sister. Thank you so much for being a part of the broadcast. Lord willing, I will be here tomorrow, and I invite you all to be a part of this broadcast. I really do. And if you want to bring some friends along, hey, we got plenty of soul food. So bring your friends along because we got plenty of seats so they can get some of this good soul food. I'm not trying to be down on no men. I'm not trying to be down on no women. I don't side with men. I don't side with women. Depending on the content, that's where I go. Okay? Because I talk about relationship. I keep it, I try to keep it real. Okay? I love you brothers. I love you sisters. Peace out.